Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to today's bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it does not cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's bonus, shall we? Before we go any further into the bonus upload, Taylor Mississippi on this channel is notorious because of Luke um, and his family's experiences that they had five generations of being tormented by a dog man. Uh, Dark Waters also had an experience in Taylor, Mississippi. Uh, I'm going to share a subscriber, a military vet, who had an experience in Taylor, Mississippi as well. But I'm also going to share with you, 15 years ago, a news program or a news piece that was on Channel 7 News in Mississippi, Taylor, Mississippi, talking about the dog man and multiple residents talking about how they have seen it. Very interesting. And finally tonight, werewolf, Bigfoot, missing link, perhaps an elaborate hoax. The people in Taylor, Mississippi would like answers to these very questions. Our own Amber Maddox is in the field to file the story of Horror in the Hamlet. For residents of tiny Taylor, Mississippi, it's the classic case of things that go bump in the night. Strange noises, unexplained shadows, and dogs barking for no reason have become the norm, all associated with what many in the area called the swamp booger. Now I blew it up so you can probably see it a little better. But a recent photo taken by local Tina Bragg may have just substantiated what has long been considered a myth. Now I reckon you can really see it there. And is that one scary looking something? Look at, look at that mouth. Look at that eye. That ain't your natural dog running around in the bushes. A sudden rash of animal mutilations and strange droppings have many believing that the mysterious creature is anything but a myth. I ain't never seen nothing like that. Aubrey Dale is a cattle farmer and was once skeptical of what he considered a fairy tale. But the discovery of some of his livestock torn apart by an unseen attacker and unexplained feces in his backyard has Mr. Dale rethinking his previous stance. We had some cows tore up in the field, man. There was this, there was this, this stuff on the ground, this, this crap, man. I ain't never seen nothing look like that. Though many in the area believe that this is the work of a Sasquatch, local Billy Teague is convinced this is the work of a creature from Cajun country known as the Lugaroo. Man, mutilating animals, cutting animals' heads off, howling at the moon. That's loop group, all right, and I promise you, the worst is yet to come. For now, local authorities aren't commenting on their investigation, but they are looking into the reports that grow in number with each passing week. For Tina Bragg, the answers can't come soon enough. I, I live by myself, and let me tell you what, I'm going to be some scared somebody until the government or somebody comes down here and does something about this creature that's been terrorizing this town of Taylor. I'm, I'm tired of it, and, uh, you know, everybody else is. And I want to know what it is, and I want it gone. Reporting from Taylor, Mississippi, I'm Amber Maddox for Channel 7 News. Today's first encounter. 
I used to live in St. Peter's, Missouri. I was close to 20 years old when we had a sighting of a creature in the late 70s. The creature was seen in St. Peter's, Missouri. This happened downtown St. Peter's at a railroad bridge that crosses over Dardine Creek. The creek may be 20 to 30 miles long and drains into the Missouri River. Downtown St. Peter's is a very small farming town. If you blink, you're already through the town. The creature could easily move around without ever being seen. The creek has large levees on both sides and was heavily wooded at the time. A friend and I used to sit by the creek or on the railroad bridge and talk. One night we were climbing on the bridge. My friend was the daring type, so I didn't think much about the shadows I saw. I thought it was just my friend fooling around. I yelled at my friend asking what he was doing. To my surprise, it was never him moving around. We just laughed it off and went on chatting. My friend had to pee, so he went off to the end of the railroad bridge and started to go. Whatever was following us lifted the railroad timbers and tried to grab my friend. We ran approximately a mile back to his house. I left out a lot of details as I'm disabled now and it's hard to write. The creature was seen many times after our first sighting and was seen by our friends. This creature is violent. Tried to kill my friend. Smells like rotten hair. It lets out a scream like a panther. One major thing that is different about this creature and that it has only three fingers. Like a tree sloth. The reason I say this is because we found handprints on the banks of the creek and the mud prints under the bridge. We never found a footprint. We saw the imprints of the fingers and the nails in the soft mud of the creek banks. It appeared they would grab the steel beams under the railroad bridge and it would leave the muddy handprint on the beam. The odd part was we never found a footprint. I say these were handprints only because they wouldn't support a creature this size. All three fingers were approximately an inch and a half in diameter and approximately eight inches long, with the middle finger slightly longer. Each nail was approximately three to four inches long and was curved like an eagle claw. I would assume both hands had three fingers because of the ability to climb under the bridge. The creature was approximately eight to nine feet tall, couldn't tell if it had a tail, only saw it from the front. It appeared to be male, very long matted hair all over its body. The hair was very dark brown, could barely see its eyes through its hair. The shoulders looked close to be five foot wide from shoulder to shoulder, very short neck. Its arms were long as the hands hung past its knees. Body shape looked like classic Bigfoot pictures, except the arms were longer and the hands were different. I could not describe the feet as the amount of hair. The creature had a very bad, rotten hair-type smell. It also let out panther-type screams one night, as we must have startled it. The creature was, or appeared aggressive to us, as it pushed over a dying tree in the woods one night. Granted, the tree was dead, but it took a lot of strength to push over a tree that was about three foot in diameter. That was the same night it let out the scream. Other times, we could tell it was getting near because you could smell that foul odor. It moved very quietly in the creek and the woods for an animal of this size. I couldn't begin to give you an approximate weight of the creature. The only thing I could think why it was aggressive is one night it appeared to be a female with two small ones with it. She stayed in the brush. I couldn't tell if it was bent over or what position to keep the two small ones guarded. She appeared to be maybe a third of the size of the male. She was 50 to 75 yards from us and the closest we got to the male was maybe 45 to 50 feet. I've told many people of this sighting over the years, and no one believes me. There were five people there at one time that saw this creature, 
and we saw it maybe four or five times in a short period of time. I guess it went to a different location on the creek. I assume it walked mainly in the water so as not to leave tracks. At the time, I was working for a company, and I was talking to another friend about my past, and we just happened to go down by the bridge. I was showing him around, and to my surprise, I spotted these prints freshly made in the mud in the creek. Chills ran up my back. I don't know what to say to this person, as they may think I made the tracks myself. Many people have seen this creature, and it's changed their lives. No one believes me. All I know is my eyes do not lie. Today's second encounter. This is my father's story, he told me back in 2018. My dad was in the woods, 57-year-old, avid hunter, scared of nothing. Doesn't believe in the paranormal. Leaving the house for the evening hunt during deer season. In the evening hunt, you go to the stand at around 3 to 4 p.m. and stay in the stand until there is no light left. I usually find an excuse to get out of the stand early, but my dad is known by us and his friends to be the last one back to the house. He had seen a few doe, but no buck that day, and decided not to take one yet. In classic dad fashion, he stayed in the stand till complete darkness had set in. The kind of darkness where you can't make out any details from two feet away starts to pack up his stuff. The next part is exactly how my dad describes it to me. The woods went completely silent out of nowhere. Not like there was any noise, but like everything in nature knew not to make a sound right then. No wind, no squirrels, nothing. Just as I start to think how weirdly quiet it had gotten all of a sudden, I heard a large stick break directly under me, but I didn't hear any rustling of leaves or sounds of any animal at all. After 30 seconds, something directly below the stand made a sound that I can only describe as a multi-tone scream so loud that it made my ears go to white noise fuzz. I have heard a lot of different animals in the wild, and nothing I have ever heard came across had that ability to make that call. Not even a human. As soon as the creature had finished its harrowing call, the stench began. It was a unique smell that only comes from a landfill mixed with heavy sulfur. I turned on my headlamp to see what was lurking below me. All I saw was a black figure move at the speed that seemed physically impossible. I started frantically shining my light in the direction that the creature moved toward, and at the tree line, I saw a set of reflective eyes looking back directly at me. The black figure behind those eyes was larger than any other animal I had ever seen in the Ozarks aside from maybe a very large cow, but it wasn't fat like a cow. It was lanky and had unruly fur that seemed to stick out out of all directions. On the top of its head, it had two large, slicked back, twisted horns or ears, similar to that of an old male goat. The eyes were easily seven feet off the ground, meaning this was taller than any native species in the area. It just sat there, breathing heavily and staring at me for what seemed like an eternity. I kept my headlamp pointed at the creature until it turned and walked away into the woods. Now at this point is when I got the call from my dad to come pick him up in the UTV and get him the heck out of there. This is the only time my dad ever sounded scared to me. He still hunts all the time and says he can't wait to see it again and hopefully get a better look. Classic, tough-ass dad thing to say. Thinks he may have seen the Ozark Howler that night. After all this, my dad has been very into Sasquatch research and the like. 
On the other hand, I believe he may have had a run-in with the Ozark Howler instead of a Bigfoot. Today's third encounter. I feel I may have had an encounter recently, but I don't feel it's worthy of coming on to your show. But anyway, I was helping my fiancé friend move to a different part of the reservation. Also, her friend was full-blooded Lakota. But we had finished moving her items into her new house on the Rosebud Res and began our trek to pick up her children at around 9 p.m. Being that I recently moved here, I can't really name the roads accurately for where we were exactly, but ended up driving a total of five hours before we reached a checkpoint to enter back into Little Wound Res. We had missed our turn. That would have shaved off a lot of time to get me back home, so I turned on my GPS and immediately took us to a sharp right turn, which led to a dirt road that was 15 miles long. It was pitch black darkness, which was new to me, but the drive was uneventful for about eight and a half to nine miles when a black cow came bolting out of the dark within three to four feet from the front of my pickup. I slammed on the brakes, being that I was only driving 30 miles an hour on dirt, but I still slid a bit. The cow thing ran in the direction we came from, and I sat there stunned for maybe five seconds when my friend said, Okay, I think you can go now. I snapped out of it. Driving again, when the corner of my eye to the right, about 200 feet or so away, in the darkness beyond the fence, I saw a large black mass run extremely fast down the hill into the ditch. It moved so much faster than a cow as well. I don't know exactly what I saw or if there was anything at all, but wasn't willing to find out. Five or six miles later, we came to the main road and we got back to Little Wound. Brother, I don't think you saw a black cow. I think you saw a dog man running through the reservation. Today's fourth part of the upload. Hey Jeff, my name is Redacted. I'm 57 years old, a veteran of the Navy and Army. I live in the southwest corner of Oklahoma. I started listening to your show during the first quarantine months, early 2020. At first, it was just different and creepy, but after about three months of listening to your broadcast, I came to believe that these things are real. I will not write long, but I took my fiancé to Jacksonville, Florida to fly back to her country, Columbia. This took place this past October 2021. We drove down through Texas, down to Interstate 10, and across to Florida. On my way back, I decided to zigzag diagonally from Jacksonville, Florida, taking the older state highways up through Georgia, Alabama, and up to Oxford, Mississippi, near Taylor, Mississippi. I got there the evening of October 10th, 2021. I got a hotel room in Oxford at the edge of town. It was a very dark night, lightly raining. But I decided to drive the short, windy, seven-mile, two-lane road to Taylor to see what it was like. I made a nighttime video and daytime video of the drive. I remember several episodes of your channel about Luke, and also an episode from your channel or another about an electrician that went to help repair some lines after Katrina. That guy's testimony might be from Dark Waters' channel, which it is. This guy was told to be very careful and watchful for these creatures while working on the pole lines, so I wanted to see the approximate location of myself. I drove slowly from my hotel down the dark, long, narrow road to Taylor. Most of the trees were about 10 feet or less from the edge of the asphalt. Only a couple or so areas in the road go back further. I even stopped a few times and rolled my windows down to listen. I never saw anything. When I got to Taylor, I stopped at a little gas station where a young gentleman was cooking barbecue, got out to ask him about the town. 
I asked if he had ever heard of the dog man or walking wolves. He replied that he hadn't, but led me inside to ask two other older gentlemen and an older woman who owned the place. I told them who I was, and they were all very nice and hospitable. When I asked them about dogmen, the two gentlemen looked scared and replied yes, then looked down and didn't want to talk any more. I thought that was strange. The older lady was still very nice and talkative. She also said she knew about them. I offered to buy one of the large barbecued pork steaks, and she said, Ain't no way you're paying for that. It is on the house, and she gave me a to-go box with a large pork steak and a large smoked sausage. I told them thank you and good night. Drove back Old Taylor Road slowly, hoping to see a dog man. But nothing. At the edge of town in Oxford, I stopped in a general dollar store to see if they had any steak sauce. I spoke to a lady employed there, stocking shelves. While she was guiding me to the right aisle, I spoke concisely as to why I was in Oxford. I mentioned the dog man, and she said she had never heard of the term. As I described to her what these creatures were, her eyes got big and said, Now I know why this one guy used to work here quit so abruptly. She explained to me that a young man that had been employed there five months previously, she told me that as soon as this young man got to work, he was so frantic and scared and told her and another lady that was the manager that he had seen one of the biggest wolves looking thing on the side of the road while driving from Taylor to Oxford. He said it was way too big to be a normal wolf. She told me that he said he'd quit and will not drive that road at night again. The next day I drove all around the little town to see the layout and tried unsuccessfully to find the Lockett Ranch that has a long history of dogman activity. Of the few locals I spoke with, no one seemed to want to talk about it. The whole area is full of tall, thick forests. The population is only about 300 plus. So I've got one more account, Jeff. I have a friend named John who is ex-military recon that works in the guns and hunting section at a farm and ranch store called Atwoods in Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton is an army town with Fort Sill Base, where is local located the only artillery training base in the United States. Anyway, I stopped in to visit him at work last Thursday, Veterans Day. It was about 5.30 p.m. He's working. We talked about preparedness and guns and such. I asked him if he knew about the dog man. He said he had never heard of such a thing. I told him that I thought I had talked to him in the past about it. He said, no. John lives 25 miles north of Lawton near a wildlife preserve in the Wichita Mountains. I described a little bit about the dog man and how they like to mutilate animals. He told me that in the last few months that two of his cows had been killed in such a horrible way that he had never seen like that before. He also told me about the strangest, scariest howl screams that have been coming from the woods. He said the howl screams were so loud that they vibrated through the air and he could feel them. I asked him to listen to a series of animal sounds that were recorded and sent to Thinker Thunker channel on YouTube. I asked him to see if any of those sounds were similar. He told me that the long, loud howl scream that is on that recording is exactly what he heard. I also asked him if he had any dogs and if they've been acting strange he told me that when these howl screams occur they start barking like crazy and go hide john said to me that he had never heard anything so scary and nor had his dogs ever acted afraid of anything i will mention here that the wildlife preserve has a lot of free roaming buffalo population and a good number of texas longhorn cattle 
there as well as a sizable lake and plenty of trees. Lots of rocks and rolling hills. I don't know about any caves. This past Tuesday, the 23rd, John texted me in the morning and told me that late Monday night his dog started barking like crazy. He got up to look outside and about 20 yards away next to his gate was a large black figure on all fours. I asked John how tall the gate was. He said he didn't know and would check. John told me the black thing was taller than his gate. I'm guessing the gate was four to six feet. John had his Taurus 44 Magnum pistol and shot toward it. It ran off. I asked him to check for prints. Also, John said he sees orbs of light fairly regularly in his yard around his property. I told him I'll probably make a trip up there this Saturday. It's only about an hour away. So I've got him, his phone number and his friend John's phone number, which I'm going to be reaching out to both of them to see what's going on, to see if they'd like to come on the channel and share. I'd like to hear about his trip to uh, Taylor, have him on and talk about that. That would be pretty interesting. Anyway, moving on. Today's fifth part of the upload. Hey Jeff, I'm a big fan. I've had two encounters. My first took place in 97 when I was 17. Me and my friends had this spot in the woods where we would hide and smoke. One afternoon, I was out there by myself. Time got away from me. It was getting dark fast. I started back. At about halfway point, I heard something or someone walking behind me. I stopped walking and it stopped. I turned around to try to see who or what was there. It was just out of the light, but I could hear this deep, raspy breathing. My blood ran cold in that moment. My instincts took over, and I started to slowly walk backwards until I got to the logging trail that led out. Back then, I had never heard of the dog man. All these years, I thought it was a Bigfoot until last year when I started to listen to your channel. My second encounter happened two weeks ago. When I saw one, it was about one in the morning. I was outside of my girlfriend's house smoking when everything went dead quiet. And then this big, dark, massive shape ran across two yards and a small two-lane road in like three or four steps. It looked like a bodybuilder, had human-like legs, no tail, and all I could see was its side profile of its head. It had a long muzzle and pointed ears. I couldn't see its eyes or teeth. Both took place in southern Indiana. Today's final encounter. This information is yours to do with as you please. I am speaking honestly and have only told a few people of my encounters. I do not want or need recognition. These things are out there. I'm originally from Louisiana, and I come from a family of hunters and fishermen. I had a Bigfoot encounter near the Toledo Bend in Louisiana at the age of five. I was literally scared crapless during my first Bigfoot encounter. My family loved to embark on these very long fishing trips. They came back the night before and got everyone up at around 4.30 in the morning the next morning to get the vehicles loaded. We always stop at the shop right to buy some fresh bait and head to Anacoco Beach or the Toledo Bend. Growing up in Louisiana and Texas, you hear about monsters, swamp man, Bigfoot, alligator, or reptile-like creatures, werewolves, rougarou. I never believed in any sort of that stuff. It scared the crap out of me and my other cousins. My aunts and uncles had experiences they would share with us, but I honestly thought they were stories. One thing about Louisiana is that the people start heading out in a hurry when the sun is going down in a certain area. They will literally tell you, hey, the sun's going down, it's time to get out of here. We're asked to walk a few minutes out from where we were fishing to go number two. I had an older brother that did some very questionable things to me in the spirit of fun and jokes. This particular day, my brother and my cousin had to go number two at the same time. 
We were told to walk together and look out for one another. We walked 15 minutes deep into the woods and started the you go, I'll look out routine. Myself and my brother took first watch, then my cousin and I took second watch. When it was my turn, I walked about 15 feet further back from their dump sites to take mine. Imagine my surprise when I watched them turn toward me, laugh, and run off. I knew they had left, and I started to cry, but went ahead and finished up. Everything went quiet, no birds, insects, or anything making noise. Fear and panic set in. There was also a foul scent. I had actually been smelling it for a while, but I thought it was my brother and cousin's dumps in the wind. As I finished wiping, I barely had gotten my pants up, and I heard this gruntish growl behind me. I turned around, and if I had not gone number two already, I would have. Absolute terror, the kind where you can't move, you're scared stiff. Not one of my two Bigfoots, one male, one female, they were covered in darkish black fur. It could have been a dark brown, but extremely dirty and matted in some areas. I forced myself to slowly move backwards as the tears were flowing. I knew I was going to die alone without anyone ever knowing what had happened to me. The male was the aggressor, grunting loud, low growls and very aggressive arm and body movements, not toward me, but to the surrounding trees. He was literally grabbing branches the size of four by six and snapping them like twigs. I had no idea how to get back to the fishing spot. I was lost and alone with two monsters. The next part is nothing short of a miracle. The female was obvious breasts and much slimmer than the male raised her left point hand and pointed in the direction I'd came from. She slapped her right in the center of the, her chest and swung it toward me. I don't speak Bigfoot, but I knew she was telling me how to get back. She began to walk to the left of me, heading the way I came from. The male followed about five steps behind her, watching my every move. He showed his dismay of me and the situation by low growls and grunts toward me and the female. He simply didn't want her to help me, to leave me, and let me figure it out. They both walked me close enough to hear my aunt's voice cursing my cousin and my brother out for leaving me. I walked toward my aunt's voice. I glanced back and watched them walk back into the forest. My aunt believed me and my mom and a few other family members thought I was abducted and had been held by a man and a woman. They went on a brief search and found large footprints. That's my first Bigfoot encounter in Louisiana at around age five. And there you have it, folks, today's bonus, which I do hope you all enjoyed as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going and what gives folks like us a place and a chance to share our experiences and theories judgment-free, simply treated with the respect we all deserve. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. And until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.